The sixth speaker of the evening is a spiritual leader of the Temple of Banatikva in Calgary. It's a beautiful temple. I just saw it after the renovations. Incredible. And please welcome to the stage Rabbi Mark Glickman. Good evening. So I've got six minutes and 40 seconds to discuss fate with you. The problem is that I'm a rabbi. I can't burp in six minutes and 40 seconds, let alone discuss something as com complicated as fate. Plus, although I'm pretty fluent now, I'm also a lifelong stutterer. If I didn't know any better, I would have thought it, this was downright anti-Semitism. And yet here we are, so let's dive in. What is fate? Faith is that part of our lives that we don't control. It's what happens to us rather than what we do out of our own free will. As a result, faith isn't necessarily good or bad. It can be either. Faith is what brought my wife Karen into my life. Faith, I think, is also what gave me four great kids and brought me here to Calgary and maybe even what brought you and me together tonight. Faith is what made me a Jew. Thank you, Faith, for all these blessings and many more. But faith can also do bad things. It brings natural disasters and terrible diseases and frustrations of all kinds. Even the best drivers can hit a patch of ice. Even innocent students can die in school shootings. Even the most health conscious among us can receive horrible biopsy results. The important question then is not whether faith is good or bad. Obviously, it can be either. A far more significant question, I think, is how important faith is in determining what happens to us. Is it the hand of fate that determines the course of our lives? Or do we get to determine our destinies independent of such outside influences? For religious philosophers, of course, the hand of faith is actually the hand of God. Who gets to decide what our lives hold in store for us, they wonder, us or God? To what extent are the events of our lives of our own making, and to what extent does God make those decisions for us? That's why, for many of these philosophers, the question of God's omniscience is actually a big deal. Does God know everything? If so, then God knows what's going to happen in the future. And if God knows what's going to happen in the future, then we don't get any input at all into that future. If God knows what's going to happen, then what we want to have happen doesn't matter at all. The ancient rabbis addressed this question head on. Everything is foreseen and free will is given, they wrote at the end of the second century. Does God know everything or do we have free will? The answer th that they gave was a resounding yes. It was a major rabbinic cop-out. <laughs> Thanks, rabbis. According to an ancient R-rated Jewish legend, when a baby is being conceived, an angel swoops down on the couple, takes a drop of semen on his finger, and flies up to God. What will become of the person who will come from this drop, the angel asks. God then tells the angel whether the person will be tall or short, fat or skinny, blonde or brunette, brown-eyed or blue. In fact, God tells that angel everything about the person being conceived, except for whether the person will be good or bad. That, the legend tells us, is up to the individual, him or herself. Or, as the ancient rabbis liked to say, everything is in the hands of heaven except for the awe of heaven. In other words, there are a lot of things that get decided for us. The size of our ears, the color of our hair, and whether we're predisposed to be athletes or poets or accountants. These things are determined by fate, but whether we're good people or not, that we do is something we decide for ourselves. Similarly, the two holiest days of the Jewish year are in the fall, Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, and Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. Together, they're called the Days of Awe. During these days, Judaism teaches, God seals our fate into place. One of the prayers we recite during the Days of Awe is called Unatana Tokef. Written, it is said, during the Crusades by Rabbi Amnon of Mainz, who endured horrible torture at the hands of the Crusaders. In his final moments, he was brought to the synagogue where he said, on Rosh Hashanah it is written, and on Yom Kippur it is sealed, who shall live and who shall die, who by, and then as you can see, it lists many of the horrible ways you can die. <laughs> the hand of fate, Rabbi Amnon seems to have been saying, rules at whim. 
God decides for us when we live and when we die, our own desires be damned. But Unatana Tokyo doesn't end there. But prayer, repentance, and charity temper the severity of God's decree, the prayer continues. Fate might determine how long we've got to live, but we've got a lot of control in the meantime. If we open our hearts in prayer, if we, if, if we reach out our, our, our hands to people in need, if we, re, if, if we work to become good people, then we can make it so that God's decree isn't so bad anymore. Or, or if you'd like to put it, we, we can put it in more secular terms. There is a date in your future when you are going to die. Something is going to come after the hyphen on your tombstone. You have no control over when that date is, but what you do control is what type of person you, you're going to be between now and then. The point is that fate and freedom are enemies of one another. Fate is the inevitable. It limits us, determining our destiny whether we want that destiny or not. Freedom, however, means possibility. It's your life as you make it. Fate limits our possibilities, freedom expands them. Fate happens, I can't avoid it, but with every morsel of my being, I rage against fate. When its decree is negative, I try to temper its severity. Fate makes me sick sometimes, I try to live healthy. Fate has led my people to be oppressed, but I try to be kind anyway. Fate made me stutter, but screw fate, I'm speaking in Pachaka Chana anyway. <laughs> and when, and when fate's decree is good, even then I rage against it. It's not just that I want to change the decree, I just want to make it better. I love my wife. I teach my people I'm here with you tonight. Fate, you smile on me often, but I'll be damned if I'm going to let you get all the credit. <laughs> my people's wisdom has taught me that my freedom is limited but awesome. God might determine my fate, but the God I know is also the God of possibility. I rage against fate's capricious decree. I cast my lot with freedom's wide expanse, and if I do it right, I become the holy person that I'm called to become. Thank you very much. <laughs>